Hello and welcome. It is a beautiful day in sunny San Diego. It's a little overcast out. My name is Nicholas Natali. This is the Nicholas Natali Show. Today we're going to be talking about all guy stuff. Males, men, all masculinity. And today I brought in two very good looking, handsome, strong men to talk about guy stuff with. We got Luke McGrath coming in at six foot three, 205. Roughly. Um, <laughs> I met Luke back in the day at band camp. That's not really true. Uh, at a camp where he was my camp counselor. And we've, we've kept this thing going. Started out as a mentor and now I feel like it's blooming into a friendship. beautiful friendship. Yes. On, on my right, we got, we got Precious. We got, we got Gage coming in oh, at... Man. I don't know, you're pretty tall now. Six I'm, foot two. I'm, like, I'm, I'm only six. Oh, shit. Technically, they tell me I'm 5'11", but I, but I push it. You're fighting that? Yeah. Coming in at 5'11", and he's masculine as well. He wants to be a Navy SEAL. He's about to get married. I'm going to bring in some fresh perspectives. So It's the stash that he's got. That's oh, like, okay. yeah, right yeah. Now. Got a strong stash brewing. That's all the Navy will let me have. <laughs> Sweet. So let's, let's, let's just start off with some, some backstories. What's, your, what's been your upbringing like? What role did you have in your family, and how did that kind of shape wow, the that's, man you are today. Let's see. My parents are both teachers. I'm the oldest of three kids. Younger, I'm the oldest, and then I have a younger brother and younger sister. I definitely was the protector and peacemaker for like my siblings, for sure. And that's kind of like my family dynamic. And then I went to college, graduated. I'm currently with a property management company doing construction management, overseeing multiple projects and multiple people. and Multiple men. Yeah, multiple men. Perfect. Yes. Sweet. That's kind of the backstory of Luke. I like it. Gage, what about you? Yeah, so I grew up, my parents divorced. My dad built houses, learned a lot from him, but um, I was the youngest. Of, I just have one real sister, and then I've, through different marriages and things, lots of, like probably seven or eight different stepbrothers and sisters, all different ages, all over the place. So a lot, a pretty big extended family. Yeah, so came here to college at USD, joined the Navy. And I, I've also learned a lot from Luke and Nick over the years. And uh, these last few years of college have helped me grow a lot as a man. And I'm about to get married in like less than a month. We're excited about so, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've learned a ton, at least through this engagement, about engagement. what it really... Engagement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that crazy to say anything it, about it? It, uh, it was at first. Like, cause we've engaged for almost like 11 months now. So it was definitely weird at first. But now it's a lot more normal in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, Ready to switch from engagement to marriage. It's been exciting though. I, 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 I've learned a lot and I've learned that there's a lot I need to learn. That's always good. So, yeah. I mean, it's good to know it rather than just be blind to it. That's right. Who or what has been the biggest influence on your life in being like the development of you as a man? You want me to take those? You go yes. first. You go. Uh, yeah, so I, you have like different, you know, areas of life and different you know, different people for those areas. Uh, as I've gotten older, my dad has been a huge influence on my life. When I was younger, I didn't really connect with him very well, but as I've gotten older, I've learned more about uh, business and building houses and things like that. Uh, I've been able to talk to him a lot more. In these last few years, I've had some really good conversations with him, that, and that's led him to, since the conversation is open now, just in general, uh, I've talked to him about relationships in life and things in general, so that's been good. Another huge uh, influence in my life was I'm um, a sixth grade teacher. His name is uh, Mr. Card. Nice. And uh, he he was probably my biggest uh, spiritual mentor um, and still is to this day. He was my sixth grade teacher and I continued a relationship with him over the years. And then in high school, I did a Bible study with him where we went through through a book all about the disciplines of what it looks like to be a godly man. And um, those that that year in high school was a huge growing experience and taught me what it looks like to be disciplined to... Uh, to center your life around God. Nice. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a step back real quick. And what was the change between your early, like younger days in your connection with your dad and why wasn't it there? And then later now, and now it's there. What, what happened that made the switch? Um, yeah. So driving made a difference. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, cause when you're, when you're a kid, you can't drive, you have to go wherever your parents pretty much want to take you. Um, and then when you get the freedom of a car, then you can decide who you want to see when you want to see them. Nice. Um, yeah. So I, I didn't have, or also I didn't have the greatest relationship with my stepmom mm. earlier. So I didn't like going over my dad's house. Right. But as soon as I could drive, 
I stopped going to my dad's house and started going down to my dad's office. Mm. And I could see That's him. smart. Yeah, yeah, right? A little work around there. Exactly. So I actually started seeing him almost every day more. So I just stopped by and say hi. And then I stopped going over there on the weekends. And, um, and you worked for your dad like in the summers in high school and college as well as like after school and high school. Yeah, yeah. So I'd make a few bucks on the side and uh, just like trash work at the job site. Just pick up trash, dig holes, kind of all the, the jobs. Labor. Yeah, the labor stuff. So it was good. I enjoy that though. I, I like... I like uh, doing manual labor jobs. So yeah, it's dirty. a win-win. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Sweet. What about you, Luke? So the biggest influencers, like, it's probably my dad for sure. Like, just growing up, uh, just my dad's work ethic. Like, he's a teacher, but, like, after school and on the weekends, like, we would be doing yard projects. And, even, like, when I was in high school, my parents bought a new house, like, when I was a sophomore, I think, in high mm-hmm. school. And uh, it's kind of on a slope. And so my dad's like, guess what? We're going to build a retaining wall. Oh, this retaining wall is built out of railroad ties. And each railroad tie weighs anywhere from like yeah. 90 to 150 pounds. Wow. Yeah. There's like my parents still live at this house. And my brother and I, like my brother and my dad and I were, like, we were out there every weekend for probably six months. And like we've gone back and counted now. And there's like over 250 oh, yeah. railroad ties. And so as you're thinking about like just digging holes and like, moving these things around like you have to pick one up and then you as soon as it like gets to the tipping point you get out of the way because you don't want this thing coming down yeah it's rolling these things it was it was not fun but like looking back like it definitely shaped like what i think of work ethic and like hard work for sure and i think that definitely comes from my dad i will say that like i did play basketball all through my life and into college and my college basketball coach was really um he just had sayings and he's been around sports and guys like for a long time and so i definitely learned a lot from him as well just take ownership of your mistakes um do things right and do it right the first time so just some of those little things that you pick up along the way um one of the things i learned from him like was uh something he was experienced like when i was when i was under him is like he had just become a grandfather and like was starting to like unpack like his emotions oh wow and so he's like guys I want you all to feel everything because that's important for growing and like feeling the fullness of life. And so that's been like, at the time I didn't think anything of it, but like, as I've gotten older, like that's such a difficult piece as men, I think to like understand like our feelings and what we feel and how important that is for our just development and our interaction with the world and each other. Why do you, this is for both of you. Why do you think that there is kind of like a suppression of, men cannot be it's almost like men cannot be emotional but that doesn't mean they cannot have feelings or experience or like almost like you should be stoic what do you think is the contributor or that's, even that's how not, do you combat it how do you combat yeah. that so okay so as far as speaking in terms of like, like 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 history i don't know what caused men to not have emotion uh, like you know it'd be an interesting uh thing to look up but as far as like, just like now now that's kind of set, I think, through just, like, media, movies, songs, and culture, even the men in our life, uh, that was just kind of the example that was set. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a lot of ways, was just to not show as much emotion. And, and then, like, uh, probably a lot through sports, right? Like, like when, uh, when, he, when I was, you know, baseball, I strike out. And then yeah. you want to cry, you know? Don't cry! Yeah, don't no, cry! Yeah, no there's, no, there's no crying in baseball. <laughs> yeah, w- which I totally agree with, um, but not for the reason... Of uh, uh, not uh, experience emotion exactly, and so that translates into then you can't cry about anything, which isn't which isn't healthy because there are definitely things you need to cry about. Yeah, yeah, and so that that's probably how that got solidified, and then we just it just kind of a self feeding cycle, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think there's audio tracks that like we hear growing up, like your 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 man don't cry. Yeah, just there are audio tracks that society and things that we've heard on what it looks like to be boys and men, and I think when we get to the point like where we want to feel something or express emotion, we revert back. Our default is those, those audio tracks that we've heard our whole life of you're not allowed to feel this way. You're not allowed to act this way. You're not allowed to feel these things when in reality, like our default is to not, but we're like, we are designed as people to have that gamut of emotions Mm -hmm. to feel everything. Yeah. I 100% agree. So, <laughs> so I, I think back to your original question, like, where does this come from? I think there's some socialization in society of like, 
were like nurtured into not yeah being, like not allowed to feel these emotions or there's certain emotions that are okay for men to feel that right they can't feel others right yeah so it's it's almost pressed upon us and we're influenced by that mm-hmm. so now here's the here's the other side of it mm-hmm. how do you take all that influence is it is it either cutting off the fat that says you can't feel that way and only choosing to accept influences that are saying like, yes, you can be fully a man or how do you continue to live a life that's fully experiencing every gamut of feelings and emotions? Yes. Yeah, so for me, this has been difficult because like all grown up, like I just suppressed all of my emotions yeah. and what that causes for me not to feel when you say I can't feel this certain emotion it disconnects that one emotion and what it does, it divorces you of all the other emotions that you have. So you become this stoic being being of yourself. Like you're outside of yourself. You've negated the humanity that you are with those emotions. And so it's been fun. Like as I've like in the last couple of years, I've been seeing a therapist consistently. And so mm-hmm. just taking like, here's this emotion, Luke, how does it make you feel? Like, why do you feel that way? Where does this come from? So I think, feeling all those motions is really important yeah uh yeah as far, as far as like uh combating it i think the best way that i've been able to learn new skills is just by watching them through people or learning from like older men and uh, a big thing for me it was like when i started studying the life of david in the bible uh he was a man that really respected you know did all this crazy warrior stuff but then he also wrote the, wrote the psalms and they're very very full of emotion mm-hmm. and so that and that that was and i mean it, you know the bible talks about david a ton like more than most other characters in there um so that kind of opened my eyes to saying like hey it's okay to like write poetry if you <laughs> feel like that you know yeah, yeah. uh it's okay to cry it's okay to cry when you're talking to god uh it's okay to feel even the like the the, the emotions of like rage and uh, like, like, like righteous anger mm-hmm. uh, towards things and, and just tapping into that emotional side of things as a whole and seeing that example, and then in turn trying to find that in other men in my life, uh, seek that out, was a huge way for me to be like, hey, it's okay. And they're experiencing a greater depth of life that I wouldn't if I only had the the non-emotional side, you know, the, the, the professional or the protector stoic, side. You know? yeah. yeah, stoic kind of. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be able to feel that that pain, anger, or the fullness of joy mm-hmm. if you were, if you didn't. If you didn't allow yourself to, and if you divorced yourself of any of those other emo- emotions. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was definitely really relieving because I, I still felt all the emotions of wanting to, to be sad and stuff, but you have to like push them down. And then once you realize, hey, you can bring those up, it's like a weight taken off the shoulder, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Huh. When was the first realization? Was it a big moment or were the, was it chipping away at it? Yeah, it, it's probably chipping away. Um, <clears throat> you know, it definitely helps to have guys you can talk to at first to really like express those things other vulnerable guys that aren't going to like you know judge you so it's important to have like a strong friend group um and i think that translates into talking to your family and then you know talking to a, a, a girl one day about these things that really helps a lot and stay <laughs> so. engaged man <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a good point though let's let's dive into it let's talk let's talk girls do we need Ooh, wow. This is a wow. I don't even know if I want to ask this. Do we need women to be fully complete? Um, so I'm of the opinion that... Uh, actually, I just finished reading a book called You're the One You've Been Waiting For. Mm-hmm. And it's this idea that I am the only, I am the primary caretaker of myself. Mm-hmm. And I can't rely on anyone else to take care of or meet my needs. Mm-hmm. So if I'm the one who understands like, oh, I feel this way. I need to do something about... like I need to either feel that feeling or do something to help me like talk about this, resolve it. Like that's, I'm, I'm the one who understands and knows myself the most looking to a woman for that completion or that like to meet those needs is not um, it, like your spouse for yeah. you gauge. Like she's going to be the secondary caretaker mm. of your emotions. Like you have to be the one doing the work on yourself of knowing that. So, can to the answer of can a woman meet your emotional needs like i i don't think so Mm -hmm. um but i do think like there are things that women do better that help us understand and like do a better job of us 
being human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally true. Like, like, so if I put my emotional needs on your your spouse, uh, that's going to crush her because she can't actually fulfill those. Right. And uh, that's going to, that's going to like weigh on her. And so she can help point me in the right direction, point me to towards God. And, uh, it, it, but, but ultimately it is between me and God to deal with those things and to, to receive actual like, like healing or, you know, work through those things. Um, and, and for, you know, for small things, obviously you can help each other out a ton, but, um, I can't put that soul burden on, on her and she can't put it on me because that's, a, that's too much for me to handle sometimes. Yeah. I don't know why she feels the emotion she does and, and I need to point her towards God instead of taking that on myself. Hmm. I've heard a lot of times that. Yeah, you, you can be like we as men can be supportive, but we can't fix it. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Yeah. There's things I can do to help, but I'm not going to be the one to fix any of the emotional or not the emotional, but fix the things of this other person. Right. Um, it has to like come from within, and the same vice versa. I've heard a lot of times that wives will feel like they're they or to caretaking for another child when they have a husband, you know? And I think what you're saying is, it's almost touching on the point of the strength of men and being firm and strong in yourself. So how do you get to that point of being almost, I don't want to say self-sustaining, but like mm-hmm. strong enough to know that... Securing yourself. Securing yourself, yeah. yeah. Oh, I... Uh, um, so I, I don't know you know there's probably a million answers uh, something that I found that helped work for me is creating like daily disciplines in your life uh, and just through small things like hey I'm just going to work out you know for a little bit each day and creating like that habit mm-hmm. um, and then changing the habit to hey I'm going to you know, read my, my bible for a little bit every day or I'm going to do this and just creating like the discipline to stay focused on things um, I think that builds an overall like self-awareness and self-discipline that helps you grow and then that translates into uh, being aware of uh, how you're feeling at certain times and uh, and then you can and then you have the the, the discipline built up to work through those emotions um, and I, it just seems like there's a I have no proof of this but it seems like there's a correlation uh, between those between those two you have proof of your own life yeah I, 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 it, it, yeah so and I, I'm I definitely mess up in a lot of ways, but it seems like uh, from what I've watched, the, the guys that uh, are disciplined in, in their daily life yeah. have more of a, a self-awareness, like emotional intelligence to, uh, to deal with uh, their emotions. It's almost like getting to know yourself, mm-hmm. you know, like the more you spend time with yourself, the more <laughs> you're going to be aware of your thoughts and feelings. Because a lot of times, at least for myself, I'll get so busy that I... I'm completely unaware of where my body's at physically and my emotions are at, like in my head, like, cause I'm always going, 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 going. And then by the time the end of the week comes, I finally get to sit down and then I'm just like destroyed, like completely drained. I haven't eaten in whatever amount of time. And I'm just like, why, why am I so unaware of this? It's probably because, you know, a lot of times I haven't set those mm. daily disciplines. So I've noticed getting away and taking time for myself just alone. Like, yeah. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is I'll go on a hike by myself and going up is really hard. But when I come back down, like the coming down, my mind wanders all over the place and it just gives me a lot of clarity on the things that I'm thinking, thinking about, but it also allows me to feel those things because my body is doing this repetitive motion consistently. So it's like on cruise control, Mm -hmm. whereas, and then my mind kind of just floats around and like all these different topics topics and things that are going on in my life so I can um, understand them better or feel those things or um, sit with them. Yeah. Hmm. I think for me too, I've, I've done a good job of avoiding that at times as well because oh yeah, there's there's the times where you don't want to get to know yourself <laughs> yeah. because you yeah. don't want to grow. Cause, just stay busy. You know? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's hard to... Yeah. Busyness is, is the enemy of self-growth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's... That's a perfect way to put it. And the recent example for me was I, I now have a longer commute to work. Like sometimes it'll be an hour or sometimes I'll drive somewhere else that's pretty far. And when I first started, I was praying, I was worshiping, I was like taking the time to like reflect on things, you know, and really utilizing that time. But as time progressed, like I was like, man, I don't really want to pray or like do this stuff. And so I'd throw on a podcast, listen to music or something like that. And now like 
over Dis- the- distracting yourself yeah. from dealing with who you are and what's really going on. Exactly. So two months have gone by, and then yesterday or whatever day it was, I like was like, I am gonna not listen to anything and just sit here, and I just kind of realized like. I got a lot to catch up on. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot going on here that I, need to, that I need to handle. That was that's been in my experience. So that's that's a lot of self self reflection. And now I'm gonna dive into since we've had Gage and I have both been mentored in some degree or another by Luke. And it seems like Luke, you've had a lot of experience just from camp camp counseling to being an RA to yeah taking things on. In yeah. Life. So I've like I've had lots of opportunities to be in leadership positions and be over people, Mm -hmm. which I'm really thankful and thankful for. I've learned, like I've been given opportunities to learn some things through that. And so the, just for your, you viewers, the first time I met Nick and first time I met Nick, we were on our way to camp and I was this camp counselor. I'm like this dude, he's, I I didn't know how to figure out Nick. (laughs) Wow. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Like you were very like, I felt like you wore this mask of like, I got, I'm cool. I got it all figured out. Everyone wants to be me. Oh, and now like I've gotten to know you, it's been really cool to see just like who you are at your core and your heart. And then Gage was also on that same bus right up, but actually Gage and I go back to, I want to say you were like eight and I was like probably, probably pretty young. Yeah. yeah. I was probably like in junior high or high school. We were in like a family Bible study through church. Wow. I just remember like this little well, gauge kid cool. running around he's like I want to be like the big kids and I remember uh, we were playing basketball one night and like we were throwing you the ball I want to say we were trying to lift you up to really? shoot it or something but that's cool that's hilarious. Hilarious. yeah <laughs> so like I've known both of you guys I mean for a long time probably 10 years for you Nick and probably yeah. 20 yeah which Dang. is crazy to think about but yeah yeah that's super wild. So, man. So mentorship, I, I'm I'm of the opinion that more is caught than taught. Like, I don't think you guys, like, yeah, I just showed up and, like, did stuff and did what was asked of me by, like, the people above me. And I think you guys just saw that and, like, oh, this is just, I, I don't think I, I don't feel like there was any, like, defining moment where I said something that made a significant difference in your life. It was just me consistently showing up and saying, yeah, just being there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, consistency. You have, you matter and you have value and you mean something. And like, I think just that consistency of saying like, you're, you're doing things right. Like I'm here to support you and I'm here to have like, if you have ideas, let's bounce, bounce them off. Let's talk about it. Like, let's go to the Bible and see what like God says about these things mm-hmm. and we can gauge like our feelings off what um, is written biblically. Yeah. I agree. We can, we can <laughs> test them in that way. Yeah. You, you actually said that recently more is caught than taught because I asked you the question cause I've, <laughs> I've been trying to mentor someone and I've just been like regurgitating every piece of information I've ever learned. Like <laughs> all, all at once. All yeah. at once. And I'm just like, this is everything I know about how to be a man. And they're kind of just sitting there like, I didn't ask for this. Oh, um, but I, it made me realize like how true that was because even with, so my brother was probably the biggest influence, male influence in my life and me and him probably never had a significant conversation of just like sitting down and like discussing through like whatever tough time. It's always been me observing his life mm-hmm. and then extracting the good parts from it. I mean, what, what, what's been your experience, like, even um, with mentors or <laughs> Luke in general? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, when I was young, my mom, she was a single mom for a while. She really pushed me to, she, like, like looking back, cause I know at the time, but she really pushed me to hang out with other men, which I'm really thankful for, because she knows that I didn't have a strong, like, central male figure in my life. Um, and then, uh, as I got older, really started to seek out mentors, um, like, that, and it's that has changed my life. Now there there's multiple guys who I can call up, Luke being one of them, uh, anytime about anything I need, you know. And you go to different guys for different situations. Um, but it's been amazing, and and you can quickly see how when you've been mentored, like how quickly you grow under their mentorship, and then how quickly you can turn around and then find a younger guy who needs that exact same thing. Um, it, it, like like an example is I'm doing the Naval ROTC program here, and we have like an official like mentor program and so cool. your freshman year you come you get a mentor and then immediately as a sophomore then you're a mentor to a freshman so within you know a couple months you're learning and then you know uh then giving that back it's been really 
awesome to see how helpful that is. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, here are the 20 things I messed up. You know, my first day of uh, <laughs> yeah. school. You know, yeah. school. <laughs> like, you know, and like, and you're like, hey, go here, 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 and then they do, and it's they. Then you get excited when the person you teach then almost does better than you because you feel like you got like an assist or something. Like you yeah. have some balls so they could score, you know. Yeah. Um, so it is pretty exciting. So yeah. I loved passing the ball when I was playing basketball growing up. Yeah. It's all about passing the game. It's all about <laughs> passing Real game. real teammate. I love, <laughs> love the Steve Nash, Jason Kidd <laughs> mm-hmm. mentality. <laughs> have you seen either of you since you both have mentorship experience, have you seen a gap, um, a consistent gap in any like, is there generic male struggles that this is kind of, this is a tough question to answer. Like, is there a consistent pattern in guys that are growing up that have this gap that need to be filled with something or a specific struggle? How have you, have you been able to walk them through it or like, what's, what's the growth after it? Very generic question. Yeah. It's a, it's a very tough one, but I think we've, I think we've hit on like, I mean, we're doing a, a podcast on masculinity and we've talked all about emotions. And so part of, or a big majority on like emotions and feelings. And so I think that's like, I know for me, it's been one of the biggest growing areas and like gaps that I've felt in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think just helping people understand like God created me in this soul thing, but it also created this body of mine. And so I'm embodied and I have all these feelings and like, it's okay to feel those feelings and understand them. And so... I think that's been like as a man, as in, and in other guys I've been around, like I definitely notice um, people who, guys particularly, who can feel and understand their emotions better than others. Yeah. Like, when, when a guy does that well, like I, I can recognize that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree with that. Uh, yeah, kind of a general, it's not, it's, I don't know if it's a lack of, but it's like a, they haven't got there yet thing. It's just a general lack of like, overall wisdom and like how to deal with like situations in life and so like something that really helped me was just reading the book of proverbs like a chapter a day you know uh just like trying to gain wisdom and asking for wisdom um and that's kind of the first thing i tell younger guys is like hey you know you might be you know it's important to be good at whatever you're trying to do but if you can gain uh, like godly wisdom that's going to take you so much further than whatever you're actually trying to do in life you know um because that that goes across all disciplines and so that's something, and it, you know, it probably comes with like age of maturity and stuff. And I'm, a, I definitely don't have it all. You know, I still, I seek it out. But it, it's really cool to see a guy who just doesn't quite like get it, yeah. it like just, whatever the it is, you yeah, know. Yeah. And then you can kind of start them seeded to, to develop like the the it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> very true. Very true. I think that's a good point about the wisdom thing because males, I almost feel like at least a stereotype, or they are notorious for making the wrong decision or getting into whatever havoc just because they, they continue to not make the right decisions. So yeah. I really like that part. And speaking of making good decisions, let's talk about girls again. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the perspective of you, Luke, and you, the engaged fan, Gage. Are there any things that you do consistently in a relationship that that is, in your eyes, treating a woman right or treating a woman the way a man should? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just like I'm trying to think. Like, I, I think it's being like I think it's being true to yourself and your convictions, and honoring that woman or that person <laughs> with all of the dignity that and value that they deserve. Um, because in the end of the day, like they're created in the image of God, and as well as I am, and so like. I have to value that identity to see who they are. Um, and so when I take that, when I take that perspective and that mindset, like it should change and it does change how I interact and how I view and how I care for this person mm-hmm. um, that I'm dealing with or dating. How do you, how do I do that? It's like, practically, are you like, are you asking like what that looks like? Um, Sure, I was almost thinking more of like, how do you build them up? Like, how do you oh. ensure that they're valued? How do you ensure mm-hmm. that they're like fulfilling that identity that they, they have? Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, wow. How do I? How do I do this practically? I, 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 we can switch yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah
something that, that, that I found that uh, really helps to, to build her up is like just sitting down and just asking how she feels mm-hmm. and, and just, say, just saying that, hey, how do you feel about this that just happened? And that way she knows that I care about her um, and knows that I uh, wanted and, uh, you know, literally set aside time. Sometimes we'll stop what we're doing to have these conversations. And then I found that that's a practical way that she can express her emotions to me. And I definitely can't always, uh, I can't always help with it or fix it. Um, so, but just knowing she knows that I'm emotionally available for her whenever she needs it. Mm, yeah. um, and I found that that like uh, having a pattern of that is like really, it really reinforces her value. And you know, something that we do like, like whenever we go somewhere and then we're driving back, I know that drive back to where we're going, like that's, that's, debrief. that's yeah, debrief. Seriously. <laughs> I'm like, all right, tell me how you felt about that. And then she'll talk the whole way home. And yeah. then by the time we get home, I'm like, perfect. I didn't say a word. And uh, she feels great. Yeah. We're all happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously there's uh there's just like something I recently decided was like, Hey, I'm going to like, like, like not, not force her, but create situations to where, she has to spend time with God. Like we have the option to go somewhere or do something. I'm like, hey, I just canceled this so we can, uh, so you can do your quiet time for the day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot like, you know, it's always kind of at first, you're like, ah, uh, but then soon, you know, like we've all done the same thing. Like, you, know, you Sometimes you don't want to spend time with God at first, but then after you do, you're always thankful you did. Yeah. You know, and so I found that that has gone a long way too. That's a great point. Is that, I, I'm going to just, yeah, I'm going to echo the that. idea of, taking time to ask how they're feeling and actually listen and care about it. I think that's, I've noticed in my life, like when I've done that, like there's greater connection with that person. Yeah. And validating those feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that probably goes for most human, most human relationships or <laughs> people, <laughs> yeah. people want to know that they're heard mm-hmm. and that their, sure. their voice is valued. Mm-hmm. But I think you're touching on something great too, about making sure she's spending time with God. Mm-hmm something man i hate to generalize and i hate to stereotype but (laughs) (laughs) freaking there's been some inconsistencies maybe it's just the things that i see in my life this or you know whatever but the spiritual leader aspect of a man i feel like has been missing for however long forever forever (laughs) probably yeah What's it? What's it take? And in, what's in it, the general population of general, society? You're right. Correct. What's it? What's it take to be the spiritual leader? And like, what are those? What are those interactions look like? Like, I know that's a that's a perfect example. But like, are there any other ways to do it consistently? Are there any other ways to step up and be the spiritual leader? I think being the spiritual leader and leading looks different for every person and for every couple. I don't know what that looks like, but (laughs) I know that like, I can't just generalize and say like, this is the formula to make it work for every couple. It has to be, I think the Holy Spirit has to convict and draw people to himself, to God. Right. So that way you understand like, you know what God is asking of you. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's going to look different. For everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, since we are the, the leader, like stepping into that leadership role and just knowing that you can't really, you can't really lead unless you're being led by mm-hmm. God because everyone submits to someone. And so, you know, if there's to like one thing our men can do as a society um, would be to, for all the men to spend time with God. And then I think just by doing that, just things will flow out of them and they will just naturally lead their their wives and their families better. I think that would work. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a great that's a great one. This is more of a personal question then. So recently one of the things that I've realized is gonna be a continuous struggle for myself, and maybe this is true for you guys as well, is that career career and creation and that like area of my life is very like strong in me like i i am determined to succeed i'm determined to have this motivation are there anything that you guys do to i guess find balance in that like what's your strategy for balance and not get caught up in the busyness that we were talking about earlier so i i'm very good at being busy and filling all of my time sweet i know which is not good but something i've noticed just in the last like probably three weeks, four weeks that I've done, like I've had 
something Monday night, Monday through Thursday night. And the last couple of Fridays, like I've taken Friday and I've just stayed home and watched TV and like not done anything. And I find myself so refreshed and ready like for like the next week and the weekend because I'm not like out every night doing things. Um, and I'm like, I'm finding, I'm, I've only recently recognized this and just my, bus- my busyness and also like being busy, like just gives me, I'm busy. So I don't have to deal with all of my crap. Mm-hmm. So I'm also trying to find things I can cut out of my social calendar mm-hmm. so I can be present with myself. Smart. Yeah. Learn more who you are. I know. Friday, Friday, <laughs> Friday, Friday's Friday popping at Luke's Friday basement. Friday <laughs> comes and like I'm home at five o'clock and like I'm in like I'm just chill. <laughs> DJ's I'm like, five I'm yeah. done. Like just leave me alone. Like I'm I'm. It's been really nice to like I've run really hard all week to try to do everything and like be productive, and then that Friday evening comes. It's like oh, this is like a time where I can not have to like worry or have to put on a face to other people to be something to them that I am not feeling right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Always be authentic. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big question. There's a lot to it. I'm still working through a lot of it, what it looks like for each job. Uh, Something an older guy told me one time, uh, as far as like like, like the the, the military or big corporations or anything like that, like like he said, there's always going to be a young guy that wants to take your spot, Mm. you know? And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And he meant it as like, you need to keep working hard. That way they don't take your spot, right? Yeah. And, and that's, how, that's how I see it, like halfway in that view. But the other half is like, hey, if I don't do this, somebody else is going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like if mm. I were to, you, you know, cause with all these jobs, like, it, it, and I think it comes from a good place. Like, you know, you were like the most important person. This job is super important. You need to do it right now. And sometimes I just think if... If I didn't do it or it didn't get done, what would happen? Yeah. You know, and sometimes nothing would happen. And then I realized, okay, then maybe I don't need to work extra on this. Mm-hmm. I can do my job for the day and then be done. And obviously you got to balance that. Like some, sometimes you got to get the job done, you know. Um, right. But yeah, some, that, another thing is like uh, all the extra stuff that goes with, with work. Like, uh, I mean, obviously in the military, big thing is like going out, I'm sure in every job, like going out and drinking with the guys after work, you yeah. know, I, I for sure missed out on a ton of bro time, drink with the guys at a bar yeah. because I just went home instead. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, some things I missed out on and I probably should have went and some things it was a really good decision that I didn't go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, it's kind of a weird thing, like you know, separating like that work life balance and just getting some alone time, you know, just by yourself or with your, with the lady. Yeah. I don't know. It's like a, it's a constant balance and I, I mess it up usually, but sometimes I do it right. And I'm like, yeah. that was good. Yeah. <laughs> that felt good. I also want to know you're wearing a Coors, a yeah. Coors shirt right now talking about getting drinks with the guy. Yeah. I feel like that's, there's nothing more perfect. For yeah. You, it, you know, it's kind of funny. I, uh, I, I really am not like a huge drinker, uh, <laughs> you, uh, but yeah, right? yeah, I'm not a huge drinker, but, um, you know, everybody's like, it, it, actually this other guy told me, he said, here's how your drinking life goes. He says, when, uh, when you're, you know, when you're 21, you enjoy like light beer, you know? Because then you lie to yourself for about ten years and say that you like IPAs, yeah. and then you get back to realizing you just like light beer. <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, you know, at first I was like drinking these IPAs, and I was like, man, this stuff is horrible. <laughs> and maybe I don't have a mature enough taste, but like, gosh darn it, if I if yeah. I want my Coors Banquet, I'm gonna sit down and crack a yeah. crack Coors Banquet. <laughs> Put my shirt on. And crack That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you grew that mustache? You drink one IPA? Yeah, it just <laughs> you bust it out. <laughs> just bopped on your mouth. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Um, speaking of work, uh, with work comes money. Look, oh, look at that transition. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, one of the big roles as a guy is, I don't know, financial wisdom. Um, and I'm very curious to hear about your stance on this because I know... A handful of people that have gotten married young and they've they've been on the side of like we don't know what we're gonna do with money um you know <laughs> and um part of me is concerned about that i don't know where you're at but i'm like i wish you would have 
planned that a little better. Or been better educated on what to do. Exactly, because yeah. education is the. That's a that's a prime that's a prime point because even myself growing up, like I didn't get financial education until you and I started talking about it. Like post, you, yeah, you were what. <laughs> Your last, your senior year of college. Senior like, year of college. Luke, I have this much debt. What am I? How do I deal with this? What's? How do I pay this off? I'm like, well, all right, let's just talk about it. Like, there's a plan. Yeah, and we cracked open a budget and nothing like a good spreadsheet. Nothing <laughs> like it. And you'd be you'd be so surprised, like how often I get asked for financial wisdom. But really, they don't know that it's you. Like, <laughs> you know, like you're the brains behind all of it. You're like, I gotta make a quick phone call. Yeah. Can you can you repeat your question? I'm gonna I'm just writing it down as yeah. a note. This is let not me a get text back to you. Tool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll just open the door to you, Gage. About to have a lady and a fam, and then we'll take it to you. The yeah. I, you're not single, but you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you got you got stuff for Um. Yeah. So, uh, my personality, I'm an actual saver. Which which helps a lot. I'm I'm generally probably gonna have more money than spenders just because I save. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, um, and so that's been good. Uh, and I, I definitely took that to the extreme with like the I'm only gonna I'm gonna eat chicken and rice every night and I'm gonna, in. I'm gonna love it. You yeah. know, and that's what I did for the last couple of years and it was great. You know, had a ton of money and stuff and then yeah. uh, then a lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, well, let's put this. When you say a ton of money, you well, mean like a for, couple, like yeah, a couple thousand dollars yeah. for a college student. Yeah, 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 a ton yeah, yeah. of money. Yeah, 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 but my world is still small. Um, <laughs> yeah. But for me, it was I was doing good, you know. And then, uh, and I was like really cheap. All my friends, like I would go out to dinner and not eat because I didn't want to pay. Hey, for, you know, that's strategy. Right <laughs> yeah, strategy, right? That's strategy. Yeah. I've one hundred percent been there a thousand yeah. times. Um, and then uh, got engaged and started you know, dating this girl. I got engaged, and then. Uh, all of a sudden, all that went out the window. Oh wow! <laughs> well, it, to you know, to a certain extent, dinners uh, every night. <laughs> uh, it was you know, we had some arguments early on, you know, because we'd we'd go to dinner and I'd be like, wow, I didn't realize the tip was going to add on that much more, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then I, I really did not enjoy the dinner, and then I was stressed the whole night. Yeah. And so once we kind of talked about it, and she's not a big spender, um, but you know, she spends money and stuff. And so once we. Once we talked about and set a budget, like here's our budget for date night, but budget for the clothes you want to get. Like once we had that out, then I was I felt so much better because I'm like, okay, this money is for dinner, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna take it. If I save more, I'm not gonna go invest it. I'm just gonna leave it in the dinner fund. Oh, so that's now, awesome. Yeah. yeah so like then I felt lot. comfortable spending literally all of it mm-hmm. because that's its only purpose. You know. Yeah. You know the whole like give a dollar purpose before you make it kind of deal. Um, yeah, that's been good. Lots of on paper, you know, on purpose. That's right. Um, and so that's been. You know, I, I've become a lot less cheap. I'm still still frugal, but I'm not cheap anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, like hey, sometimes you get to buy things, especially with like bills. I think that helps. Like, man, you just gotta pay the bills. And I actually like that responsibility of like, I enjoy using my phone because I paid for it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm glad the, the lights come on stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's been and it's still in progress. Just you know. You, Every, every every time a new area of life comes up, it's like, oh man, all right, sit down and talk about this. So it's been good though; it's been fun. I, I love talking about money. That's great. Sweet yeah. money talk, right yeah. here, baby. Luke, hit me, hit me with the goods, man. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy talking about money. Uh, my background: I have a my undergrad is in marketing, but my MBA is in finance, and so I've really enjoyed just understanding money and just like how it affects us. I love talking about personal finance and I love seeing people succeed with it. And I think that's like you guys, it's been fun to like, like have you upstairs in my kitchen counter, like with your laptops out, like, all right, how do, how do I do this? What do I do? And just like looking at how to plan for the future with like investments, but also like your day to day with your budgets. It's been really cool to see just your, your guys' success in that. And I think there's, um, as you get older, you'll get better and better at it, and you guys are going to be very successful. So I'm not, I'm not worried. That's good. I, I got to tell the story real quick. <laughs> I tell the story. <laughs> tell the story. I saved up about three grand for Vanguard Investment, right? Yeah. I didn't know what to put it in. I call up Luke, and I'm like, Luke, I saved up three grand. Let's freaking let's invest it. And he goes, I got to leave in like ten minutes, but if you come by, like we'll do it. And I get there. Five minutes in, we blow three grand on an investment. And he goes, we just blew three grand. And I'm like, yeah, we did. <laughs> like, yeah. And then we bounced. And it was so fast. But <laughs> I was stoked because it was in an investment. Yeah. 
And I just thought that was so funny. I was like, man, it took forever to earn it, and now it's all yeah. Straight now listed. it's now it's in this fund that you yeah. Like you can't touch until you're fifty nine and a half. <laughs> That's right. But <laughs> but it's gonna grow tax free because yeah. it's a Roth IRA. Yeah. yeah. Which is awesome. Just like compound interest. Like if you're getting ten percent on your money, which is consistently, yeah. you can find funds that will do that. Yeah. In seven years, it'll double. Yeah. So if you just expand that over your lifetime from the time you're I think we did that when you were, what, 22, 23? Yeah, 22. Yeah, this 22. year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, like, if you, the next 40 years, I mean, divide that by seven, that's five yeah. times. That that money's going to double five times. Heck yeah. yeah. It's but nice. it's going to double in seven years. It'll double. Mm-hmm. And then that amount that's at seven years will double again at 14. So <sighs> rolling. So it's not, <laughs> it's not doubling. It's exponential growth yeah. over time, which is really cool to see That's yeah so something with the money thing I, like like reading books about money is like probably one of my favorite things you know yeah and uh i just read the read the book the richest man in babylon oh, i know you guys read that that's, one, that's yeah, on my amazon list yeah yeah it literally I, I was working at the library actually and this guy came in <laughs> yeah and this guy came in and he was he was hey does the library take donations i said well what book do you have he hands me the Richard Man Babylon. And I said, as a matter of fact, we do. <laughs> we do back. now, sir. I took it in my backpack, took it right there. <laughs> wow. And you just committed I just, that. I just, it's a, it's a crime, right? <laughs> You're a book thief. Yeah, a book thief. <laughs> Speaking of, the book thief is another great thing. It is a good one. Yeah, but it was awesome. And just these, these simple principles of like, just like saving, like having a job, saving a little bit of your money, and then putting that to like wise, safe investments. Like, it works 100% of the time. Mm, yeah. Know? So, let's just, like, I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan, and, like, you can find lots of information Wait, on that. Wait, do you use credit cards, though? I do have a credit card, but D- I have Dave Ramsey would kill you. I haven't used it in <laughs> three months, so I'm, okay, working, that's pretty I'm good. working to get away from it, which is really, I've enjoyed. But, like, for people who are just starting out, like, get on the 10 10 80 budget, which is, yeah. like, save 10, tithe 10, yeah. and then the, 80, the other 80 you can use. Um, to like pay your bills and do everything else and so just if you're looking for the first step in trying to set up a budget and do money right yeah. with your life start there um, that'll be helpful and just getting off the ground yeah absolutely there is a there's a battle inside of my heart going on with money <laughs> that was a weird way to say that yeah. <laughs> but something i want to touch on is i frequently i'm thinking of of other people and like how I want to help them with my money. Mm -hmm. But I think what's really important that I often neglect is that my money has to be right with me first because someday, I mean, especially if you're going to have a family. And I think that if you put yourself in a position that's going to be like, you're not providing for your family and it's like detrimental. I think that's step number one is take care of yourself and then help others. Right. So I kind of wanted to get you guys opinion on like, how do you balance providing for yourself and others and then also generosity? Yeah, so that's a, that's a tough one. So like, like, I always think of the analogy, like when you're in an airplane, right? They say like, put your mask on first mm-hmm. and help the person next to you. You can't breathe, you're not gonna be able to help anybody. <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's like there's a certain amount of like good selfishness that you need in order to help those around you. And, and, and I wouldn't even say that's selfish. I would say that's wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, as far as the generosity thing, like, like, like maybe it sounds, I don't know if it sounds good or bad, but like budget for generosity. Like, hey, I want to tie 10% and I want to spend an extra, you know, four or 5% to give to the homeless guy that I street, see on the street, you know? Um, yeah. and, and, and like, I think if you can make it as like, like strategic, yeah, and unemotional as possible, then you're okay. You know, you're like, and this is probably different for everybody, but I'm like, hey, I, I, I gave what I, what I was was good, and I gave you know all this stuff. But it is hard when something comes up, and they're like, oh, we need we need everybody to give right now. You know, for this yeah, I'm like, yeah. uh, like I'm, I'm strategizing. Yeah, sir. <laughs> yeah, and I think there are definitely are times when you you know you really feel like God's telling you to give, like you know, throw the throw the twenty in the thing or whatever. Yeah. But uh, you know, other times it's like, sorry, I, I've I did what I'm what I'm doing, and it's good, but. Uh, can't help you right now. And I think there's a, there is like a wisdom in saying, I'm not able to help you right now too. Yeah. You know, absolutely. No, I, I echo all of Dave's <laughs> thoughts. Like, especially when you put it in budgets and like, you know where it's going. Like you talked about how I have this budget set aside for date night. Yeah. Well, if at the beginning of the month I have this budget set aside for giving and tithe, like 
then you I can give that money and not have to worry about like the rest of my budget because I know like I have money in other categories for the things that I need mm-hmm. to live that month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm and like tithe and giving is less about the money and it's more about where your heart's at because if your heart yeah. says like I'm gonna hold on to this money because I need it mm-hmm. then like I think that says something more about your heart than it does about the money um, whereas like when you can give freely I think there's this open free like your behavior changes because you recognize that the money is like like it makes you a thoughtful giving person and those are the type of people you want to be around you don't want to be around Scrooge McDuck yeah that's true Nobody wants to be around Scrooge. They're no. making duck. I didn't know that was his last name. You didn't know? Come on, DuckTales? Nope. Really? No idea. Do you know? No. My man. Oh, man. Scrooge, Scrooge McDuck. All right. I will, yeah. I will send you guys Gosh. a link to some <laughs> cartoons later. All right? Deal. We're going to move on to the lightning round. And then also maybe just finish off with a couple banger questions. The lightning round comes from people that comment on my Instagram of what to ask. So... It's good stuff. Nice. Typically, you try to answer quick, okay. hence the lightning. <laughs> but um, from being honest, I usually just edit it to make it sound like everybody answered quick. So, <laughs> Gio asks, should men always pay for dates? Uh, so I have a budget set aside that, and I just pay for everything in that budget. And then at the end of the month, I say, we're out of money. Done. Moving on. Nice. Uh, yes. And then if you're out of money, you can't take your own date. Boom. Done. <laughs> I think there's communication that goes along yeah. in, in that. Yeah, yeah. Sure, so. communication is <laughs> probably yeah, a big part of it. Uh, Samaya asks, how come no guys know about how to be a man, masculinity, or how to treat women? <laughs> um, I think there's a cultural divide or a societal divide where there isn't training or it isn't, men don't know what that looks like and how to do that well. Um, and I think there's a great... I think there's, we just lack the understanding of what that looks like and how to do it. Yeah. And I think it's not taught well um, in society or taught by society. It should be taught by families. Yeah. 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 I agree with everything we said. Just like uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going off what we were taught and so we don't know. So it, she can help this out by pushing the men in her life to, to be men, you know, and to like push them towards that. Because if, if they don't have something pushing them towards it, then they won't get it. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point for women to not take the role of a man, but to push men toward being yeah, men. Yeah, yeah. There's a quote I heard one time where it said, if you want your man to be the warrior poet, treat him like he's already holding the pen and the sword. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and call, call him out to his, 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 man, his manhood. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is me. This is... This is written in by myself. What are three things you should always do on a date? Compliment them, ask how they're feeling, open the doors. Nice. Yeah, that's that, yeah. I was gonna say like 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 get the door. Good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then make them feel valued. Um, mm-hmm. And then if you think the date's going well, then carry on with it. But if not, don't, don't leave them on if you don't think the date's going well. Love it. The, the faster you cut it off, the ha- happier everyone is. Yeah. Long term. All right. Lightning rounds over. That was great. Uh, final question, an absolute banger. What is your definition of a man? It's a great yeah. question. <laughs> definition of a man. Um, I think someone who cares for others, not is someone who is selfless but doesn't think about themselves less, gives freely. I mean, I know you interviewed Tim Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, oh man, we're on here with Tim Cool. <laughs> 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 so I, like. I, there's a lot of characteristics that I see in Tim that I'm like, that's like, he has some great characteristics and things that I look at like as a man, like, man, like that, there's some manliness there that I'm like, I want to emulate. Yeah. And I think I find, I, I think there's men in my life that I'm like, oh, I want to emulate that character. So like my grandfather, like he's 85 years old and still gets up every morning at 7 a.m. and like goes to work. Oh, that's cool. But like, it's his business. So like, it's a little bit different. But then his faithfulness in that and his walk with the Lord. like So there's those characteristics. And then there's just like the hard work ethic that I see in my dad. Um, and so there's just multiple characteristics that I think I see that I want to emulate. So those are, 
I think that's part of my answer. I don't know. <laughs> Deal. That's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, Tim Pool, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Tim Cool is the definition. <laughs> I'm going to pull the, the, the Trump card with, uh, I'm going to say, like, go to the ultimate man, the ultimate man, which is, like, Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, and, and really, like, uh, study him and see how he reacted to situations and then just try mm-hmm. to emulate that. He has, the, I think the biggest thing Jesus has is total union with God, which, um, which having that is going to guide you through every situation in life, and that will make you the best man that that God uh, sees for you. Um, yeah, and then just take take wisdom from the other men in your life. You know, as far as what that what it means to be a man is different for every single man, and so find out what God is calling you to, and step into that, and then uh, surround yourself with other men to to get there. So, and it's a lifelong process, right? And yeah. we'll probably never actually fully achieve it you know but hopefully we can be proud of uh, uh what we're doing a disclaimer like we are not perfect we've oh, not arrived yeah, we're not even yeah. close <laughs> figuring Jeez. This out. and there's still things that we're working on and trying to figure out on a daily basis which makes this pursuit of masculinity um like growing a growing possible process absolutely Sweet. Well, thank you two guys for being here yeah. on the show. Thanks, really, Dave. really appreciate it. I think you guys are both tremendous. Do you have any? Do you have any like uh, anything online, like internet presence that you'd like to shout out? No, I've worked really hard to start eliminating my <laughs> online presence because it's a distraction for me. My man. <laughs> so yeah. I'm trying to stay offline. Cool. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. Way, I got. You? I got nothing. I have no Facebook. I have no Instagram. Nothing. You can. Uh, talk to Nick. He has my phone number. You can give, <laughs> you can give me a call. That would be great. <laughs> there you go. You can follow me at Nicholas Itali because I have everything. Yeah. So, Doing real life with real people. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Dope. All right. Thanks. Bye. YOLO. That's scary. It is a little scary. Shut up, Keith. Keith, you're ruining, you're ruining the outro, Keith. If you found that podcast educational, powerful, helpful, lovely, interesting, or wonderful, please subscribe and share it with a friend. We are trying to be the podcast to reach 100 five-star reviews the fastest, so please do not forget to rate it with five stars and leave a review to be next week's reviewer of the week. Go ahead and connect with me at Nicholas Natale on all... on all social media platforms. I respond to every comment and message I get. Don't forget to head on over to my Patreon, patreon patreon.com slash Nicholas Natale. I have no idea what I'm doing on there yet, but... Stop. My, spell it out. No, it's just patreon.com. But I don't know how to spell that. You don't know how to spell Patreon? No, and if you mumble and somebody is not getting it... Fine. I'm just saying. You're right. No, you're right. (sighs) Patreon.com slash Nicholas Natale. P A T R E O N dot com slash N I C K O L A S N A T A L I. Boom, baby. Go be become a patron. Patron? Become a patron. patron. Become a patron, baby. So it's my patron.com. Patreon. It's Patreon. Patreon. No, I just spelled it. P A T R E O N. It's Patreon.com and you can become a patron. <laughs> I think you should leave it like this as the outro. <laughs> All right, bye.